the amino acid stay joined together when um, one amino acid joins with another amino acid with another amino acid then you form what you call uh, a polypeptide chain when the proteins are more uh, when the uh, the amino acids are more than 50 then we shall call it a protein so when do we call it a polypeptide chain we call it polypeptide chain when it is less than 50 amino acids but if it's above amino acids then we call it um we call it uh, a protein yes so in this case if you look at our body system uh, it's made up of these enzymes hormones and the structures which build up our bodies so we call them um we call them uh, they're made up of proteins that's why when it's too much heat or too much temperature is happening uh the temperature has uh, maybe rise uh to above uh 37.5 then we shall say that these proteins are denatured and then our systems cannot work anymore uh, properly why because these are uh, things which run our body uh, systems are made up of proteins and then the moment you mess up with the protein with the high temperatures then the proteins are going to be denatured for example when you put an egg an egg uh, on a frying pan uh, what happens you find out that it, it, it changes that shape and then uh, it solidifies in science we call it denaturation so when you have too much temperature then it means that uh, these enzymes these hormones and the structures which are made up of our bodies then they are denatured and then we shall say that you pack and then you go where you don't unpack meaning that you enter the cemetery all right let's talk about uh, proteins the uh, what is it divided how is it uh, uh, happening in the cell it is divided into two uh, major phases when you go to other books they will talk about other phases but in this case for today we're going to talk about the two phases which are involved here the first one is transcription when they ask you in the exam what is transcription you say is the formation of the messenger rna and translation is the formation of a polypeptide chain i've explained what is a polypeptide chain a polypeptide chain is the combination of amino acids but these amino acids are supposed to be less than 50 amino acids if they are above 50 amino acids then we call it a what a protein then this amino acid for example you have one amino acid uh, one amino acid combined with another amino acid combined with another amino acids then we say you form what you call the polypeptide uh, uh, chain but what is this bond which joins these amino acids together the bond is called a peptide bond if there are many we call them peptide bonds we don't call them polypeptide bonds the moment you say polypeptide bonds is wrong i've been saying that and please you need to emphasize on that because there are many students they talk about polypeptide chain when it is not like that Sorry, they, they, they call it polypeptide uh, bond when it's not like that. When you say poly, then it means that it's a chain. When you say when you when you want to say many peptide bond, then you say you add the word S, you add the S on the bond. So it is peptide bonds, polypeptide chain. When you swap them, you get zero. All right, let's continue to. We have said that protein synthesis is divided into two. The first one is transcription, formation of a messenger RNA, and then the second one is translation, which is formation of a polypeptide chain. What does transcription occur? Transcription occurs in the nucleus. It occurs in the nucleus. While well, translation occurs in the cyto uh, cytoplasm. It occurs in the cytoplasm cytoplasm so you need to know the two sites where uh, transcription and translation occurs from transcription occurs in the nucleus well translation occurs in the cytoplasm so do i know that this is transcription when you bring a question you always say that 
uh, if it has a, a, a membrane, a membrane which is surrounding something, right? yes, you just know that. And then you have something coiled that way, or it is in form of helix. Then you just know that this is the nucleus, and then this is the cyto, um, cytoplasm. And then what happens here is tra translation. And what happens here is trans uh, transcription. Transcription. Yes. So now, what happens in transcription? When you are marking, what are we supposed to look at this? What are we supposed to look at? We're supposed to look at um, uh, some few things when we look at transcription. And what we look at when we go to translation, uh, these are the things which you need to focus on when you go to this. All right. This process is divided as into transcription and translation, whereby in transcription, all this called, mm -mm, yeah, all this, let me just say like this, is transcription and all this is translation. All right, DNA, this is the DNA, is it, it is, remember it's double helix, so it unwinds, after unwinding, it makes one strand, as a template so you have two strands here but which of the two is a template check where these 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 ones are they are not on this side they're on this side part of four is strand if this is strand a and this is strand b strand a strand b is the template remember we say that template means a mirror whenever i talk about a template we are talking about a mirror so when you um you, you have a template then it means that you form a mirror of this sorry you form an image of this but it's not exactly the same but it's an image we say that these bases are complementary meaning that if one is left one is right that's why you have a goes with t slash u and then c goes with g so in this case because we're forming messenger and a so instead of uh a goes instead of a goes in with the t so a is gonna go with u because we don't have uh we don't have uracil in messenger RNA. then after that you form uh, a messenger RNA. this messenger RNA has coded information from the dna and then that coded information will go to the cytoplasm the moment it reaches the cytoplasm transcription sorry translation starts and then the moment starts, then a polypeptide chain is formed, of which uh, it joins and then starts to change the, uh, some ingredients are done, and then it forms the specific structure it is needed. Either the structure of the body, either uh, it is um, the, um, the enzymes, or it could be the uh, hormone. So it depends on which structure is needed there, but it's because of the ingredients which are being added there and then the structure is formed. Let's look at transcription in detail and we see what do they really need when it comes to transcription. Yes. What do they need when it comes to transcription? When you talk about transcription, uh, these are the things which they need. DNA double helix unwind. Well, guys, don't confuse DNA uh, double helix and this is DNA. It is helical. Because as another helical, then it becomes double helix. All right. So what happens? It is this double helix, it unwinds. So when it unwinds, it means that uh, the bonds in between strand A and strand B are still intact. They have not broken them. No. Yes. So that's the first step. The DNA double helix is to unwind. So you have to say that double helix DNA or DNA double helix. We want to see this. You want you have to describe this the, the shape before anything else has happened. You understand? Yes. You have to describe the shape before anything else has happened. 
And what is that shape? Double helix. So double helix unwinds. So we have seen it. Uh, weak hydrogen bonds, or when the weak hydrogen bonds break, so when the weak hydrogen bonds break, so what happens? So when you see like this, you know, um, it's like that, and then now the weak hydrogen bonds, the bonds in here, they break. So when they break, it starts to unzip. You see, it starts to unzip. It means that now it exposes the two separate strands. The two separate strands are being exposed. So after that, what happens? Um, so we're saying that the weak hydrogen bonds, uh, they break. Sometimes we can say unzip is the same thing. So here you get a mark and also here you get a mark. So in this case, one strand, this one, one is very crucial when it comes to this. One strand will act as a template. One strand, when it acts as a template, what happens? Template, which means a mirror. Don't use mirror in exam because you'll get it wrong. It as a template. Guys, if you have a question, let me know uh, because we are live and then we are able to assist you if you have any question concerning about this process of transcription and translation. But you're going to see some of the questions you can answer or some of, because this is just a process whereby everyone can memorize it, can go to the paper and then write it. The only problem are the questions we're going to be talking about uh, when you have finished the description of this. Yes. So, uh, one strand is used as a template. So, if one strand is used as a template, it means that the other one is left inactive. So, it means that if this is the one which is acting as a template, then the other one, let me just do like this. Use a different color. Yes. Okay. The other one is going to come and then also join there and then it forms another strand but what does it use to form this new strand what does it use mm. ah this strand once it is formed it it we call it it's it's complementary yes so what does it use it is using what called a free messenger RNA nucleotide remember when we are talking about dna uh, replication we say that using free floating dna nucleotide because now here we are talking about we are forming messenger RNA, then we form free floating using free floating messenger RNA nucleotide. They are coming from from the nucleoplasm. That's the meaning. So they are coming from the nucleoplasm, and then what is formed? This strand which you see here in this color is formed, uh, and this strand is complementary to the DNA. So messenger RNA is complementary to DNA, whereby adenine goes with uracil. Why? Because messenger RNA or RNAs, they don't have thymine. They have uracil. And then cytosine is going to pair with or is complementary uh, with uh, guanine. You understand? So now, what is this messenger RNA? Now this one becomes a messenger RNA. And remember, it is in the nucleus. It is still here in the nucleus. So that strand has formed. And then what does it have? What is this strand containing? It contains the information from the DNA. That's what you are saying here. Um, the messenger A now has the coded information, coded message for, for protein synthesis. It has the coded uh, information or message for protein synthesis, and this message is coming from DNA. You understand? Uh, I think I will show you how this coded information is 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 being made. Yes. Why do we say it's coded information? Yes. So now, what happens? The messenger RNA moves out of the nucleus so the moment is done now it starts to move out of the nucleus where does it go it goes to the cytoplasm and where exactly in the cytoplasm on the ribosome yes it occurs in the ribosome whenever you see something which looks like a circle big and then something is having there then that is a ribosome yes so it goes to the ribosome so this is messenger RNA, which goes to the ribosome on the, sorry, in the cytoplasm onto the ribosome. And then now what happens? Yes, the messenger RNA moves from the nucleus through the nuclear pore. 
So it passes through these holes you see. Let me zoom it out so that you see it clearly. Yes. So um you see this hole, so it that's where it passes. Yes, it passes into these small, small holes. And then after that, if you look at our diagram here, you will see that it's moving out of the nucleus through these holes, you know. Yes, so that hole is called the nuclear pore, the pore of the nucleus. Yes, so we call them the pore of the, the nucleus. So uh, basically, uh, that is it. Then now what happens, uh, the next step is uh, now this messenger RNA, it will move out of the nucleus via the nuclear pore. And then where does it go? It goes to the ribosome. It goes to the ribosome where it attaches itself. And then the moment is there, translation occurs. So what are you supposed to write? You say that you need double helix and one with her in bones break and then uh, to form two separate strands. Yes, one strand, that word one, this word one is very crucial. If you don't put it there, you're going to lose a mark. And forget that this is a process of which when you say a process, yes. When you say a process, what does it mean? It means that something which you're supposed to um, to uh, something which you're supposed to, uh, to, 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 to to like when you eat what is next? It goes to the throat. Yes. When it goes to the throat, uh -huh. what is next? It goes to the stomach. When it goes to the stomach, what's happened? Yeah. It goes to the intestine. When it goes to the intestine, what happens? You absorb whatever you absorb, the rest you have to go to the toilet and you do your cacare. Uh -huh. well, it's a process. You start with the, going to the toilet and then it goes to the intestine. Uh -huh. The process is supposed to have that line that from here, I go here, I go here, I go here. If you mess them up, you lose marks because this is a process. So the advice I would give you guys is to try to memorize, understand this process, memorize, and then you know that it's done. Because whatever you see there in a different color is a marking point. If you change, when you don't talk about those points we have indicated there, you get a zero. We don't care whether you have written 10, 10, 10 uh, pages as long as you don't have what we want. We'll give you a zero. So, guys, uh, please don't get a zero um, when you're using this uh, this channel of uh, uh, Thunder Eduk. All right. Um, I wish to, or I would like to send this um a uh, message to all those people who have sent me messages trying to be appreciative to our channel uh, of obtaining distinctions. I know that uh, it is worth it because you used to be on our channel all the time. And I would like it to encourage those people who are here and they want to get distinctions that you are not lost you are on the correct channel and you'll be able to get those distinctions if you keep on watching and doing what we tell you then you'll be able to get those distinctions thank you very much and then let's continue to translation translation is the formation of messenger no no no, no. uh formation of the polypeptide chain formation of the poly poly peptide Poly Yes. Yeah. We are saying that uh, translation is the formation of the polypeptide 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 chain. Yes, polypeptide chain. So what it depends on how you have described it, but the description doesn't matter as long as you talk about what we want from you. That's number one is um, each tRNA or each transfer RNA carries a specific amino acid. 
HDR necker is a specific amino acid. This is the one mark. If you lose one of these, you lost. It's all or nothing law. You get it wrong or you get it all. So when the anticodon, we want to see the word anticodon. Remember that anticodons are the three bases which are found on the messenger RNA. We have what called a codons. We have what called a codes. Codes. We have what called a codons. We have what you call a anti codons. Codes are three bases, three bases on DNA. And then codons are the three bases on messenger RNA. And then three bases on the transfer RNA, we call them anticodons. TRNA. Yes, so we call them anticodons. So this is DNA, this is messenger, this is... So in, sometimes when you are describing, we do only talk about this. Mm -hmm. And we don't talk about that. Okay, this is found on DNA. This is found on messenger RNA. This is found on transfer RNA. Sometimes we don't do that. Yes, we don't do that. Yes. So, um, the messenger RNA, when the anticodon on transfer RNA matches, yes, when it matches, if the anticodon, when this, this anticodon, yes, matches what is on the messenger RNA, the codons, yes, that's the, what it means. Then the transfer RNA, now this transfer RNA, when this one is matched, for example, this one has matched with this, yes. Now what happens? Now this transfer RNA will bring this amino acid. Remember, it is carrying an amino acid. That's why it's called transfer RNA. It will bring the amino acid to the ribosome, yes to bring the required amino acid to the ribosome. This transfer RNA will only carry a specific amino acid. It's not all the, the amino acid, no. Like the same way, the key which opens your door, it will not open the neighbor's door. It is only one, one key, one lock. That's the same thing principle it is using. One key, one lock. So that's how it is. So, if it is one key, one lock, then automatically it means that uh, it is going to be able to uh, take this uh, DNA, only one amino acid to the ribosome. So, the amino acids become attached by, guys, check upon this. Check upon this. The amino acids are joined together by peptide bonds. I say it is peptide bonds. It's not polypeptide chain to form a required protein, simple. Or I can say that, according to the messenger RNA codon, yes, according to the messenger RNA and uh, messenger RNA codons, the transfer RNA with the complementary anticodon, you see, complementary anticodon, will bring the required amino acid to the ribosome. The amino acids are joined together by peptide bonds to form a required Simple. So it depends on how you have described it, but as long as you talk about what is these key areas you're supposed to please record the paper without knowing it because we'll bring it. You want it or not? We'll bring it. We'll bring either transcription, translation, DNA structure, and then uh DNA replication. All those three, we will bring one or two. You understand? So don't go there and say, ah, me, I'm not going to memorize it. And then ah, you'll get a zero. You'll get a zero. No, sometimes we are scared to talk about it that you'll get a zero. But that is the fact. Yes. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, then you end up having a what? A zero. Yes. All right. Let's continue to the next uh, subtopic which you call uh, mutations. Before we go to the questions, this is one of the most failed part. Yes. When you talk about DNA, this is one of the most failed part. Part where students are failing like in no one's business. Yes. All right, let's go through it. Mutation on DNA 
that is gene mutation. You have three, two, two, three kinds of uh, uh, two kinds of mutations. We're gonna see them, and this is how they bring them in the exam. So, what is a mutation? A mutation is any uh, alternation which happens on the DNA sequence. Yes. So sometimes it could be the whole chromosome, or it could be just a portion of DNA. So when it is just a, a specific part of DNA, then we call it point mutation. Or sometimes we call it gene mutation. Remember, gene is just a section. If this is DNA, just a section of DNA which control a certain character or a particular character, when it changes, then we shall say it's a gene mutation. So mutation, uh, a mutation is a permanent alternation in the DNA sequence that makes up a gene. It makes up what we call a gene. So which, what will happen if, no, question, what will happen if a mutation changes from triplet number one, ATG2 triplet this? Look, there's something you should need to look at. If this codes for the same amino acid as this, then the protein will not change. So it's like me calling you Parabo Mabena, for example. I can call you Mabena or I can call you Karabo. You understand? Or you're going to be Mtweni. Uh, and then they call you whatever they they they, they add there. Ne? Zulu. Then they say uh, maybe Mbali Zulu, whatever. Ne? Yes. So I can call if you are Mbali Zulu. I can say Mbali. Say yes sir. Zulu. You say yes sir. It's like calling you with another name. So when if the mutation occurs and this mutation this. Uh, codes for a specific amino acid, for example, valine, and also after changing, mutation has changed, and also this code codes for the same thing, which is valine, then automatically the protein will not change. But if it happens that now this is coded, coding for valine, and then after this one has changed, now it is uh, coding for proline, then automatically it's going to change. It's going to change. The protein is going to change. But how do I identify that this is has changed, this is not changing? All right, let's see it. You say that, you say that, TG, you first come here and then find out what is indicated here. They are saying DNA. So what is here is DNA. So I'm saying ATG, ATG. What does ATG indicate here? A but here they're saying codons, which means messenger RNA. You see, I told you that when you bring this, we don't tell you that it's messenger RNA or what. So I will, I, 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 I have to know that I have to convert it two times or once. So now I will say, I will say that, okay, uh, ATG, ATG, A goes with U, T goes with A. And G goes with the C. So I'm going to look for A U C. A U C. A U. Where is it? A U C. A U. A U. A. A. It's not A U C. It is U S C. U. I was looking for it. U S C. Which is tracing. It is tracing. What about ATG? 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 ATA? ATA? Am I hungry? Okay. ATA goes with A goes with U. T goes with A. And then A goes with U. So it's going to be UAU. UAU. U A U U A U uh -huh. again it is uh uh privacy. You see that uh when this uh triplet changes from A T G to A T A, yes, they code for the same amino acid. Therefore, the protein will not 
change. And protein will not change. Yeah, someone is asking me from a different chat that I really want to pass it. I was okay, level okay. You you will pass, we will pass. When when are you going to do economics live? Economics live, we're gonna do it this week. Yes. Every week we are having our classes. Every week we are having classes. So you guys just have to be on our channels. You will be able to obtain our a distinction from this content. Yes. All right. Then let's continue to the next question. And then you say that. Um, okay. Then you're saying that. Now, what happens if base triplet number four, base triplet number four, T T T A, T T A changes to T T T. So we have to find out T goes with the A, ne? and then T goes with the A, and then A goes with the U. Because this is messenger RNA. Okay. What does it mean? Okay, let's first find also this one. This one T goes with the uh, a, T goes with A, and then T goes with A. So I'm going to look for AAU, which is AAU, which is valine. Ne? And then AAA, AAA is proline. You see? AAA is here, is proline. So now, when this mutation occurs, it changes from A, from TTA to TTT, which code for different amino acid that is from uh from a a, a, U, a a u which is from valine to proline and then the protein automatically is going to change why because i changed from here to here you understand it's like calling papa or mama you see that the, there are two different people there if you change from papa to mama then automatically you will get different results so it means that if you change the amino acid and this amino acid leads to a different um when you change the the code and then this code leads to a different amino acid definitely the protein will change but if you change the code this code and then the codes they don't change the amino acid being coded for then the protein will not change yes the mutation had occurred or has occurred inside the cell but this mutation does not affect the, 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 the organism having the cell. Why? Because they code it for the same amino acid. That's what it means. I think I'm clear there. Yes. Then, um, that is a uh, base class, that's protein synthesis. And then now what you're going to look at is... Um, the practicing questions. Let's look at the practicing questions and then we see. Yes, practicing questions, practicing questions. Let's try to practice some of these questions and then we see what we can get from them. Hmm. I think now you can see clearly. All right. When I give you such questions, guys, what you are supposed to do is to um, um, what you're supposed to do is to first label. What is this circle? The circle is amino acid. Amino acid. Uh, what is this? Remember, I told you that if you find it like that, or big circle only with something on it ne? that is a ribosome therefore z is the ribosome then process b remember this is the nucleus see the membrane i told you here you see i told you here you see yes i told you that so that's the membrane so automatically this is transi transcription ne? While this one is transi, what is here, process B, is translation. 
Ne? Yeah. What is this on the ribosome? It is a messenger RNA. Yes. And then what is this? This is a tRNA. That is this thing. It's tRNA. Okay. Protein synthesis. Name the part of protein synthesis indicated by A. A, we said it's trans, you see? Now you're able to obtain answers. Why? Because you have labeled everything. It's transcription. Um, identify molecule X. Molecule X is messenger RNA, you see? Molecule Y is amino acid, you see? And then organelle Z. Ah, it is the ribosome. Uh -huh. Then they're saying describe the role of W of W during process A. Process A, what is W? W is DNA. You didn't see it. It's DNA. What does DNA do in the process of transcription? DNA forms uh, a, strong, uh, a template where messenger RNA, which is complementary, will be transcribed from you understand so basically it exposes one strand which is a template for formation of a complementary strand which is a messenger RNA now this messenger RNA will have the coded information for protein synthesis you understand yes so basically it it, it opens to form a strand where messenger RNA is formed from you understand? So it's the basis of the messenger RNA to form. And then after that, this messenger RNA will have the coded information from DNA. What is it for? It is for protein synthesis. Sir, someone is asking me from a different chat that, sir, how can I get the distinction material book? How can you get the distinction material book? You download it from our uh, website you will check it from the description the, the, the link in this uh, video or any other video yes so that's how you can obtain um, that distinction material yes name and describe the process B name and describe process B okay we have said it already this process B is transcription Translation. Name is translation. And then describe which takes place on organelle Z. Basically, they're asking you describe the process of translation. The moment you describe, you name that process B is translation. Then you describe for us that translation, um, according to the messenger and codon, the transfer name with, with the complementary codons require bring the required amino acid to the ribosome. Amino acid are joined together by peptide bond to form a required protein. Describe the process B, which takes place. Yeah, so there are so many marks which are there, but they gave it three marks, of which still uh, you'll be able to obtain whatever they want it from there. So name the 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 bond that joined. You see, I've been emphasizing this that please don't call it polypeptide chain, polypeptide bond. We don't have. I repeat, I repeat, and I will keep repeating. We do not have polypeptide bond. I repeat, let me even uh, say, we do not have this. What we have is peptide bond. This is correct. Correct, correct. I repeat this because you students, I don't know what you think about but you always give this as a polypeptide bond, which does not exist. And you will not have mercy when you are marking. You will give you a zero, and sometimes you will put eyes there to show you that you are ashamed. All right. Please don't be ashamed. Ne? Don't ashamed me, because whatever you are doing, you will be ashaming me, because you are here to obtain the distinction. All right. Name the type of bond. Okay, we have said that the type of bond is peptide bond. Name the table below shows the triplet 
based uh, on the template of DNA for some amino acids. Okay, let's see. Here is the table. I think so. Eh? Yes, four points. Yes. There's a table. The diagram below shows the base sequence in messenger RNA and DNA uh, for the first seven amino acids in the polypeptide. Uh, you see, polypeptide. Polypeptide. Yes, polypeptide. Yes, of hemoglobin. Whenever you talk about poly, you're talking about the chain. You're talking about the what? The chain. Uh -huh. So, use the table to determine, okay, what is A? What is A? A, this is DNA. So, I just have to do reverse transcription. Whereby, uh, this is G. This is a goes with T because this is DNA, né? and then this is C. So you get it right. What is B? Where is B? T goes with A, C, U. Why U? Because this is a messenger RNA. I'll give you a trick. What is C? C. Uh, we go back to the table. But before you go to the table, you need to look at something. Uh, here, do I look at this? What's that saying? See? Come here. These are amino acids. Okay. This is DNA triplet. This is DNA triplet. You see it? It is DNA triplet. It means that you are not using this. You are using this. G... A C. I come here. Look for G A G A G A G G A C. It's here, which is leucine. So the answer there is gonna be leu. Then we go to E. It's DNA, so I have to do the reverse transcription. Then G goes with G goes with C. A goes with T because it's DNA, G goes with C. Yeah, so basically that is it. And then lastly, D. So now remember this is DNA, so it means that you're going to have to use this. CTC. Of which CTC? CTC. CTC. Yeah, that's the one which is glutamic acid. So that's how you try to translate guys please let me know if you have a question don't forget to subscribe to like and also share uh, or follow us so that wow everyone is happy and able to obtain a distinction don't forget that we always have classes we have classes we also have um, uh, a holiday camp study camp we allow all students as long as you're gonna be Displayed. In the subject of physical science, life science, maths, business, uh, economics, and uh, economics and uh, business, economics, and then uh, mathlete. Pure maths, mathlete, uh, life science, economics, uh, business, and physical science. So if you want uh, any inquiry about it, yeah, we're going to have to sleep there for four days. By the time you come back home, Ah, yeah, yeah, it will be at least ahead of uh, anyone. Why? Because we have to push to see that uh, at least the syllabus can be completed uh, before the end of uh, May. Yes. So before the end of May, the syllabus must be complete so that we only focus on revision. So if you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Or if you want to be among the people in the camp, let me know. Uh, or for, uh, try to WhatsApp me on my number, then we'll be able to uh, give you the updates about the camp. All right, D, so we have seen that D is um, D, D is glutamic acid. 
Yes. So what about uh, explain how the change in a single base of the six DNA triplet may lead to the production of a different protein? So six base, so they're saying one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I change one of this, maybe this, I put it with um, A, yes, any of that, then it means that uh, if DNA base sequence has changed, then automatically the messenger RNA sequence will also change, which means that it will be, it might lead to a different protein because a different amino acid has been brought to the ribosome. So you see, so when you change the DNA, DNA, yes, definitely the messenger RNA also is going to change. Definitely the transfer RNA, which is going to come onto the ribosome, is also going to change. And once it changes, then a different protein will be formed. That's what they are looking for. So please, guys, uh, don't confuse these questions. These questions are simple, and you are able to obtain them. All right. Let's continue to the next question. Explain how the change, so we have seen it, that change in the DNA sequence will lead to a change in the messenger RNA sequence, which will lead to a different amino acid brought by transferring it to the ribosome, which might lead to a different protein. So you keep on telling us that, okay, if this doesn't happen, this will happen. You understand? If this doesn't happen, so you keep on explaining that in the same sequence. So question 4.3, I told you that once you get a, a question, make sure that you label it. So this is uh, amino, amino acid, depending on where you're coming from. Then this one is trans Y. Y is tRNA. And then Z is anti, anti, hold on. Yes. And then W is polypeptide chain. Can I call it a protein? No. Protein? No. No, no protein. Why? Because these are not 50 amino acids and above. You understand? Yes. So it is a polypeptide chain. So this one is wrong, and then this one is correct. When they are saying that, identify molecule Y. We said it, it is transparent. A group of nitrogenous base Z. How do you? It's anticodon, you see? If X is the next amino acid required after W. Then identify nitrogenous base one, two, three. If 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 X is the next, okay. So if it's the next here, so it means that it's gonna be uh, U G G. So one, two, three. So yeah. And then they're saying that DNA base triplet that code for X. They're looking for DNA base triplet that code for X. So if this is the uh, messenger uh, transfer A, then messenger is like this. So I'm going to have to change this to DNA, which is going to be TGG. So that's it. Why? Because I have to change this into DNA. This is messenger. So I have to change it to DNA, which is TGG. Then they're asking you another question that uh, DNA triplet that code for X. So we are done with that. Describe the process of transcription. You need double helix unwind, weak hydrogen bonds break, then perform two separate strands. One strand is acting as a template for formation of a messenger RNA um, using free floating nucleotides, uh, of using free floating RNA nucleotide from the nucleoplasm. And then uh, a complementary strand is formed whereby adenine join, uh, complements uh, uracil and the guanine complements or pairs with the cytosine. Uh, this messenger RNA formed uh, is having coded information for protein synthesis and then it moves out of the nucleus to the uh, ribosome uh, 
uh, via the nuclear power. So basically, they're asking you to describe the process of transcription. Whereby, if you look at the way I was explaining it, it's not exactly the same, but I have talked about all the points which are indicated in the booklet for this distinction material. So I always tell you that these guys use this distinction material to be able to get a distinction. Yes, I know. I know because it's not the first or the second people are using this uh, book booklets and then they are benefiting from that. Yes. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so when we are done with that, then you go to the next question. Um, just saying that. Uh, question number four. Uh -huh. Base label, they're saying that definitely this is a, a template, this is messenger, this is a polypeptide chain, polypeptide chain, and then this is, check this big circle, you see? See what I told you? So this is a ribo ribosome <clears throat> this is a codon because codon three bases on messengers the codon yeah so it depends on what they are looking for this one is dna dna yes so now let's start uh, answering the question provide a molecule number one molecule number one is dna double helix it's dna double stranded it's a double stranded dna with dna yes Molecule number organelle six, ribosome. So we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, give the number of the part which represents DNA template strand. Template, you see, it's number two. So we talked about it. why? Because the messenger is forming and is facing that side. You see, so this side definitely, this one is, is copying from this side. Therefore, number two is the template. Then they're saying that um, monomer of protein, monomer of protein. Um, where is the monomer of protein? So it's, it's, it's supposed to be, okay, it's number five because they're not joined. You see, it's number five. Then they are saying that codon, codon are the three bases on the messenger RNA. So it's codon there. <laughs> so describe the translation process. So you see that they keep on repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again. You see? So you see that when I tell you that we're going to bring the same thing over and over and over again, then automatically you have to know that ah uh, describe the process of translation so you have to know how to describe this i've been saying it several times yes uh provide the sequence that code for glycine glycine provide the dna sequence glycine yes so this is a messenger so this messenger is g g a so dna is going to be c c C C T. So that's what they are looking for. Give you your two marks. Uh, codon of proline. Codon means uh, the messenger RNA of pro proline is here. So it's gonna be C C C C U. So that's what they are looking for. And then Mm, state two difference between DNA nucleotide. Yeah, there are only two differences. When they say DNA nucleotide, we are looking at this. Yes, of DNA and RNA phosphate, region R is sugar, and then a region S base. So you can say that you they didn't say tablet, they're just saying differences. DNA nucleotide, RNA nucleotide. And you say DNA has the oxy, the oxy ribose sugar. While RNA has ribose sugar. DNA has thymine, while RNA has uracil. Simple. That's it. 
There's nothing magic or unique on this. Yeah. Uh, those are some of the questions. Hey, guys, uh, if you have any question, let me know so that we can grill those questions. Those who want private classes, yeah, please also let me know. Yes. And then uh, uh, that's it for today. Uh, the next class is going to be meiosis. We'll also grill it. Uh, subtopic by subtopic and then we do some questions if you don't understand a specific question let me know in the comment section then we'll be able to answer those questions thank you very much for tuning uh, on thunder eduke don't forget to follow us to subscribe to like to share yes so that uh, you are able to obtain uh, those distinctions